Hello, I am Dr. Deanna Hentz, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Illinois Department of Atmospheric Sciences. In this video, I'll be talking about atmospheric and oceanic circulations and the role they play in climate. When we stand outside, we will often feel the wind blowing against us. When we swim in the ocean, we may feel currents trying to push us away from our spot on the beach. We're going to talk about how these two fluids, the air and the ocean, move on a global scale and how this leads to different climate regimes around the world. So why do the atmosphere and ocean move the way they do? The sun's radiation doesn't hit the Earth evenly. The tropics receive direct energy from the sun year-round, while the poles not only get less direct solar radiation, but also spend part of the year not getting any direct solar radiation at all. This leads to a big imbalance of energy, with the tropical regions of the ocean and atmosphere receiving more energy and thus being warmer and less dense than the poles. The atmosphere and ocean circulations exist to remove this imbalance by moving the heat towards the poles. The air in the tropics is warmer and less dense than the poles, so the air tends to rise in the tropics, known as convection. Air at the poles is colder and denser, so it tends to sink. This drives the circulation between the tropics and the poles in each hemisphere. This would be how our atmosphere works if our Earth didn't rotate. When we add rotation, the large overturning circulation breaks up into cells, or three smaller circulations in each hemisphere. The tropical circulation is called the Hadley cell. Air rises in the intertropical convergence zone, or ITCZ, near the equator. The ITCZ is very rainy, and thus many of the world's luscious rainforests tend to be located in this region. The descending branch of the Hadley cell is located over the subtropics. This subsiding air tends to be very warm and dry, and is at the latitude where many of the world's deserts are. A band of easterly winds, known as the trade winds, form between the rising and the descending branches due to the rotation of the Earth. The second cell, in the mid-latitudes, is called the feral cell. The feral cell causes westerly winds in the mid-latitudes, and is the reason why we look to the west when we make weather forecasts. The third cell, at the poles, is called the polar cell. This is the smallest and the weakest of the three cells in the atmosphere. Air in these cells sink over highest latitudes and flows towards the lowest latitudes at the surface. Now, the ocean is also working to move the excess energy it receives in the tropics towards the poles to remove the energy imbalance we've discussed. The atmosphere and ocean are obviously not the same, and these differences have a lot to do with why the atmosphere and ocean move differently. The ocean is much more dense than the atmosphere. It also has a higher heat capacity than the atmosphere, so it takes a lot more energy to raise its temperature, but also loses that heat much more slowly. Because the ocean has a high heat capacity, it can also serve as a sink and reservoir for heat that the atmosphere and the land cannot. Also, let us not forget that the ocean isn't just water. All of that salt means that the density of the ocean relies on both the temperature and the salinity. Plus, on top of it all, the oceans have continents to deal with. The surface currents in the ocean move mostly in the same direction as the surface winds and are similarly deflected by the Earth's rotation. As water moves towards the poles, it cools and becomes more saline as the water freezes. This cold, salty water is very dense and so it sinks near the poles. This deep water moves along the bottom of the ocean towards the equator. This ocean circulation is known as the thermohaline circulation. Upwelling is a process of deep water from the bottom of the ocean being brought to the surface. In regions of upwelling, like in the Pacific near Peru, the oceans tend to be colder and rich with sea life as nutrients are brought up from the ocean floor. The ocean circulation happens on a much slower time scale than what happens in the atmosphere. Although we see the atmosphere respond quickly to big changes, such as increased greenhouse gas concentrations, it can take years or decades for those changes to be obvious in the oceans. So, as you can see, these large circulations in the atmosphere and the ocean play a key role in maintaining our climate system. As the energy balance of our Earth system changes, it is essential for us to understand how these circulations will behave.